So welcome to the show, guys. Hey there, business owners, directors, and marketeers. In today's show, I'm meeting Kurt Daniel from Ubersmith. Uh, I'm Lucas, your host as always, and I want to tell you a little bit about uh, Kurt before we jump into the questions. So Kurt is the CEO of Ubersmith, a leader in the subscription management software for the cloud, and I like how they say it, and beyond. And he's a frequent blogger, speaker, and a tweeter on subscriptions, the cloud strategy, and other topics like that. Um, he has previously actually been uh, wrapping up a lot of uh, experience in the field. So he has helped to build and scale three startups that are worth now over a billion by now, including MongoDB. So a lot of experience under the belt. Um, great to have you on the show. Welcome, Kurt. Great to be here. Thanks so much. Yeah. So tell us about Ubersmith. What is it all about? Sure. Uh, Ubersmith is a growing and uh, profitable company uh, based in New York City. Uh, we're really focused on subscription billing and business management software. Uh, what makes us unique uh, in the billing and related areas uh, is our focus on usage-based billing. Uh, so most SaaS companies and, and are doing or should be doing this model and other companies outside of SaaS uh, should be, should be uh, seriously looking at it as well. Um, beyond billing, we do uh, quoting and order management uh, for a customer portal for our customers, uh, uh, ticketing and other things uh, tightly integrated with the billing so customers don't have to stitch all these things together, which is very valuable. We, in fact, have 100 plus integrations uh, for payments around the world, uh, accounting services, tax and other technologies. And uh, we have a plug in system. Uh, so any great billing or business management system is going to be very developer friendly, very open. Uh, so you can build really whatever you can imagine to grow your business uh, to the uh, maximum potential uh, possible and not be not be limited by it. Um, and our, our vision overall is to really enable any business model uh, that you can think of or want to pursue as a company. Uh, or a set of business models in any infrastructure as well, particularly if you're more of a technology company, uh, thinking about the cloud and IT and other resources. Um, but you can really use Ubersmith for, for anything, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a very open and flexible offering. Very cool. So that leaves the teams that are implementing it space to focus on their product and not at the same time building all of this, you know, building infrastructure themselves. So really interesting. That's the idea. A lot of people build their own uh, billing engines and, and later regret it. The team leaves and, and it just becomes hard to keep up with and, and things are so dynamic. And there's so many other things that could be focusing on, like like amazing user experience, like a Zoom or a Slack or uh, other, other types of things that are more core to their, uh, their product offerings. Makes sure. a lot of sense. Would you uh, mind to describe who are the people that benefit most from Ubersmith? What are the, the types of teams or the types of companies that would be a typical user? Uh, sure. So we have a lot of uh, SaaS companies. Um, we have uh, other tech companies. These, these could be uh, uh, hardware companies, um, cloud services companies like uh, AWS, but more likely kind of small, mid-size uh, uh, firms. Uh, we have some uh, telcos, VoIP providers, uh, and so on and so forth. And then some companies completely uh, unrelated to technology, uh, people that help uh, um, do uh, you know solar? Uh, we have a company that helps uh, store your documents for you, like your paper documents. Uh, these types of things as well. Makes a lot of sense. I would be curious to understand what does the typical journey of somebody looking like that you know starts to discover Ubermiss and then you know gets to know the product and becomes a client eventually. What would be a typical journey or the channels that they would be moving along? Uh, sure. It's uh, so we've we've um, we've proud to have been around for a while. So uh, been in business for around uh, 17 years uh, and kind of growing steadily. We uh, so we have a lot of word of mouth. People know our reputation. They know the product. They know what it can do. That's unique. Uh, we go kind of deep on billing, but we also have the breadth of offering in terms of having ticketing these kinds of things. These are very unique. There's so many, uh, for example, billing companies just in the billing arena. Uh, that look quite similar, but for us to, to have like more integrations or more breadth of functionality, uh, things that it's very easy for people to remember and to recommend, take us into new companies if they leave their current company and go to a new company. And so we have a lot of uh, word of mouth, uh, a lot of partnerships as well. So software partners, uh, services partners, uh, where we introduce each other, which has been uh, whether or not there's a referral agreement, which has been a, a great model. Uh, we also um, have had some good success with SEO. For example, we do some really specific turnkey usage billing, say for bandwidth or uh, for AWS or the cloud. Uh, there are not that many companies that, that do uh, some of these things. And so um, that's why we have customers in, uh, you know, in Africa and Asia and Australia and all over, even though we've really never um, you know, visited those countries as, as a team uh, yet, at least. So, um, so a lot of uh, SEO, um, we, uh, 
have some very targeted PR and analyst uh, activities we do. Uh, we've had some success doing some highly targeted events, either around subscriptions uh, or the cloud uh, or both uh, in terms of doing keynotes, uh, less success with panels in terms of getting the key messages across and that kind of thing and be really being viewed as a thought leader. And then uh, some good success actually on social media um, and uh, less, less success in terms of reaching people, I think, through blogs uh, and through uh, webinars. Um, although we put a lot of work into it, we've just seen uh, to date more success with those other things. And we also had a paid search uh, project that uh, I don't think that went uh, that well, but it doesn't mean that paid search is uh, not going to be successful for others or even for us in the future if we do it in a different way. Yeah, very cool. I really appreciate that you sort of like were showing on the one side what worked and on the other side what didn't work so well for you. So that makes it for the listener much easier to understand in your particular use case um, sort of what that, that looked like. Um, you mentioned SEO. Um, what does the which role does the website play in sort of the overall system of winning in clients for you? Uh, it plays a, a really important role. Uh, we have a product that does a lot of things. And so what we want to do is, um, and in some unique ways, so we want to um, as easily and quickly as possible communicate that to people without uh, uh, making them feel uh, overwhelmed mm -hmm. uh, with all the different offerings we have. Um, and, uh, you know, we're on the smaller side as a company. We're owned by a public company, but we're a division and we're relatively small. Versus if you're a really large, well-known company, I think they can digest more offerings, for example. So we put extra effort into that. We're doing a, a, a major upgrade right now, which is going to, um, to, uh, to take us to a, to a whole other level in terms of, uh, of, of, of really showing off uh, the offering. We have invested in the last year in terms of uh, a chat bot. We've had really good results with Drift in terms of automating that aspect uh, from when people get there. Um, the call to action, we're really focused on a trial. Even though we obviously can do a demo, set up a demo call, we can have a sales call about pricing or, or uh, pro, you know, uh, requirements for the project or that kind of thing. We really focus it on one thing. I think that's critical. Um, and we've had a newsletter uh, sign up, which has been a great way to kind of warm up people. And uh, you know, many companies don't do this well. They don't even capture the information for the for the um, for the people who want to sign up. Or if they do, they don't actually um, communicate with them, which is a real shame. Yep. Um, we want to have. Uh, as much pricing clarity as we can. Uh, I get really irritated when I go to a customer and I have no idea not only what the price points uh, are, but also what the actual pricing model itself, the underlying metric. Am I charged for the amount invoiced to the system? Am I charged based on the number of employees I have or the number of users I have or uh, some other metric? Um, and so I think that's really critical. And, cool. and companies that don't do any of that now, I think should really kind of be left alone. There are other things we think about in terms of documentation and videos. Uh, transparency in terms of who many of our customers are, not trying to kind of hide them for the world, but really show them off. And uh, we keep adding more and more kind of tiles, uh, logo tiles of our customers. Uh, we have in you know 15 countries around the world. And then uh, another area we're in, uh, implementing or investing in now is uh, HubSpot. So we're excited to get HubSpot going in uh, you know conjunction with the website upgrade and everything else we have going on. Very cool. I'm, I'm interested in one particular thing that you mentioned there, which was the uh, chatbot that you mentioned. I've, I've spoken to um, a lot of SaaS founders that have been implementing a chatbot, whichever version, um, on their pages and have seen different results. Sometimes, you know, not so much of an uplift, sometimes a 10%, 12% uplift. Could you give us a rough idea of the uplift? Is that possible? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I have a great number for you. Um, I could definitely get back to you with it for sure. Um, it, it is something we track. I just don't have it on the top of my head. Uh, we had a different tool before, uh, which was less effective. So it was visible on every page of the website, I think the bottom right. And and what we like about the drift, even over the previous one, which was better than having nothing, uh, is it's really active and it really kind of gets your attention. Uh, so instead of like a static icon or a static image down there, um, it kind of, you know, hi, you know, uh, what, what type of role are you? Are you a customer, a partner, a potential customer? Um, and uh, some people may find it, I don't know, may find it irritating, but I think most people uh, really appreciate uh, being kind of engaged that way. They know they can pick up the phone if they want to pick up the phone or they can send us uh, something through uh, Twitter or email or some other way. But uh, for the people who, who are ready to get some help from us directly, uh, rather than scouring the website, uh, all the pages uh, themselves, uh, I think it's a great uh, move forward uh, that, that I've seen in terms of technology for websites. Very cool. Very cool. What, would, what would be the key metrics that you would focus on? Because there's tons of metrics on the website that you could take uh, in focus. What is important for you? 
Sure. Yeah. It's well. It's all the standard ones that we track. But what's important is uh, the number of trial requests. So trial requests, and then just contact us forms. So uh, contact us form. It'll be more about the pricing, the product. Can you uh, set up something for my team? Uh, can we meet at an event? That kind of thing. And then the the trial is really like the 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 person who's saying, I, I see something that's uh, different about your product. I want to take a look at it. Um, I'm attracted to it. Can you please help enable that? And that we want to uh, get that uh, set up. It's obviously hosted by us for them uh, and uh, can be turned on uh, pretty much immediately, uh, which is great. So it's really the really the trial. And obviously, we track a lot of other things as well. Cool. Very cool. Um, and, um, and you mentioned already a, a couple of things that you did to improve. You mentioned the, the chatbot implementation, highlighting some of the clients. Any war story to share? Maybe any anything where you learned something on how you were able to improve the trial signups or the demo uh, requests um, from your website? Anything? Any tests? Maybe that you can recall where you learned uh, something? Maybe even surprising uh, on how to improve those metrics. Um, I mean, one of I don't know if it's surprising, but one of the things is how how, how much the numbers kind of can, can move around month to month when we have a product launch or another major effort. Uh, so so that we're always kind of seeing that. Um, we've experimented with um, offering the free trial and then not having the free trial, having the demo versus the trial. Uh, and for us, the trial works. For other companies, it might work more that the demo works. But I think the demo would work more for those companies that. Uh, I don't know, maybe they're more high-end kind of enterprise focus, whereas we serve kind of small, medium, and large uh, enterprises as well. And and uh, so I think for us, by by offering the trial and by by being as transparent as as as, um, as we're able to on pricing, uh, I think we're telling the market that uh, yeah, this is a product that will that will work. We don't have to come on site, and uh, it's not going to be uh, you know exorbitantly expensive to get started. That kind of thing. In fact, you want the off opposite which is what our customers uh, should hopefully be doing with their customers, offering them uh, a simple, fair, and easy to understand pricing, offer free trials wherever possible, depending on the product type, whether it's SaaS or otherwise, uh, having a low low entry point, um, which still hopefully comes with uh, some professional uh, support, uh, and then growing and scaling together, offering obviously a monthly or annual term, and really not being rigid or inflexible or trying to force your model on the market uh, or your customers, but uh, but kind of uh, triangulating between you know, your wishes, the market, and uh, the customers you're serving, obviously. Very cool. Yeah, very interesting to learn how you're thinking about you know, optimizing, uh, creating opportunities from the website. I would like to switch gears a little bit and learn a little bit about the early days uh, of the company and, and you as a, as a CEO uh, of the company. Can you recall the days where you guys got to the maybe first 10 customers? Uh, that actually, it's... Uh, um, uh, it, it was a while ago. It was before I joined the company, uh, yeah. but uh, the the team did a great job. Really, I would almost describe it as bootstrapped. Although we were started with inside of another company, uh, inside of another startup, and uh, the company, the team did a great job, kind of um, just getting the product uh, to market to do a really great job really early on in terms of subscription billing. So. Uh, subscription billing, uh, I mean, there have been subscriptions for a long time. People used to have uh, milk delivered to their doors before I was born, uh, way back when in the early 1900s, I believe. But uh, uh, there have been subscriptions, but in terms of like uh, these kind of online subscriptions for online products and types of things. So so we were early at that, and then uh, we did a great job. They did a great job getting uh, dozens of customers, and then we just uh, invested more in the billing over time. Uh, in, in had a pretty focused go to market and then kind of expanded that. So we were just focused on serving uh, cloud services companies or hosting providers and over time started to um, support more and more technology companies uh, types and then uh, more and more uh, non-technology uh, type of segments as well and added additional product uh, kind of functionality uh, adjacent to uh, billing to, to, um, to not only invest in the billing but also invest in these other things which the customers were we're really uh, asking for very strongly. So give us more integrations, give us more functionality, and uh, but we like what you kind of started with. So the team did a great job getting the initial product market fit. And I think we've done, uh, it's challenging for a product like this. People have all sorts of ideas in terms of things uh, they want you to integrate with all around the world, you know, different, uh, for example, uh, banks, they want you to integrate for ACH or payments in Australia and, and uh, South Africa. Uh, Etc. And um, what we're doing is trying to do as many as we can for that, but also enable 
organizations to add their own as well, which is great because then we don't limit them uh, in any way. They don't feel uh, held hostage to the uh, to the uh, to the software, which many companies do. Um, if they chose something a little bit too kind of inflexible or too focused, you can't really predict your business model in the future, what business you might acquire, what new product offerings you have, or new pricing you want to do. And so you want to feel like it's uh, you're not just handing something over into a black box, but you really know how you could take over and, and uh, you know, essentially drive the car if you need to in the future. Makes a lot of sense. Cool. So I would be curious, you as a CEO of the of the company, if you could pinpoint one thing that has really helped you guys to grow the company. I know it's probably a lot of things in <laughs> in combination, but is there one thing that you could single out as having helped you to grow the companies as a company as it does right now? Um, that, that's a great question. It's really hard to say just one thing. I mean, there's things we've done recently that I could think of, things from the beginning, things overall over time. Uh, I, I'd say um, just uh, I'd say just from the product perspective, just starting out really focused, and then just listening to to the customers and getting the feedback. Um, our product was relatively affordable, very affordable actually to begin with, and I think that really helped with the adoption which helped us get more feedback, which gave us great ideas. In addition to the ideas we had, uh, we have plenty of our own ideas in terms of how to innovate, but to balance that with what the customers are asking for as well. So those, those types of things helped in the early days. Lately, we've been really focusing on just opening up the system, which I think is great, uh, partnering uh, with other folks who can really help us bring a, a better combined business management offering to the market uh, for SaaS and other companies, uh, a real focus on metrics. So you know, revenue, churn, profitability, acquisition, sales, product, uh, support, et cetera. Not just, not just financial metrics, not just sales metrics, uh, all those key metrics and not, uh, not 50 metrics per function, but what are a couple key metrics? We track that monthly now. Uh, it does not take uh, much time at all. Everyone in the company helps with their area. And that's one interesting initiative in addition to opening the platform and um, there, there's so many things we're doing on the product side. Uh, I don't have time to mention, uh, but just really exciting new integrations we're doing, new, um, new, new capabilities uh, we're offering, and, and new go-to-market approaches as well. New sales automation, uh, we um, new marketing automation, and uh, just uh, team building, all sorts of other things. Very cool. Um, I would be curious to know. Um, because you joined into the company uh, slightly after it got initiated, as you just were describing before, the team was already running, and then you joined in. What would be one advice that you would give yourself if you would go back into this day when you joined the company, gears are already starting to run, run what would be advice that you would give yourself? Because I think it's an interesting and unique situation. Sure. Um, I mean... We've done a lot of good things, so there, there's not there's not that, that many things uh, we'd probably undo. Um, I I think I just uh, as as soon as possible just invest in like the latest tools, invest in your people, like just get the best people possible. Like you hire amazing people, uh, they can do things you you haven't even thought of um, to to really push it forward. So I'd say the people, the tools, not to sound too generic. Um, and then uh, really focus on the product. So one thing we would do is we'd be even more focused on the product in terms of the probably the amount of integrations we did before we opened up the system. That's a big one. Um, it's very tempting just to get a couple of those big customers or prospects that, the integration that they want that you know other people will want as well. Uh, but then it just kind of leads to this uh, just this uh, endless amount of requests that, that it becomes very hard to keep up with, even if you have a very large engineering team. Um, those those are a couple things. Um, the pricing we would have simplified earlier. Absolutely, we used to have a met a model that had three different metrics: yep. uh, so the number of users in the system, the customers you had in the system, and the devices, and actually like a premium kind of user for quoting. Uh, and it all made sense because our system, this kind of modern ERP system, did a lot of different things. But what we've uh, what we've found is there's one metric model based on what people invoice through the system. A very tiny percentage of that. And it's very fair and it's very simple to understand. So I'd say uh, pricing as simple as possible, but make sure it's scalable and usage based. Uh, the product, you know, focus potentially even more uh, than you think you already are. You think you're already well focused. You can maybe focus even more. Some of the biggest winners out there, the, the world, world's more global. The, the winners are winning big and they're winning fast. Look at, again, Zoom and Slack, uh, Datadog and others. 
uh, don't don't try to do too much. And um, and if you can ride uh, some, you know, one wave or two, we're riding the subscription wave with our customers. Like they're getting the benefit of that subscription wave, and we are. Uh, the SaaS wave, the the transition to third party cloud and data centers for us, the shift towards cons uh, consumption based business models and globalization, these kinds of things. And so, if you're able to ride those waves, it's I think it's much easier to win. Uh, whether it's a niche uh, market or whether it's a market that is just kind of uh, coming into play or a more market, uh, established market like uh, Zoom, uh, you know, attacking or what Google did uh, against Yahoo and such. Yep, very cool. Just one last follow-up question on this because I was just, it sparked my mind, I was, I was interested. Um, you mentioned the free trial a couple of times. Uh, anything you've learned about what is a really good period of time for a free trial to be not too long but also giving enough of an experience? <laughs> That's, uh, that's a great question. I, I've been thinking about this for uh, almost 20 years. I, I used to work at Microsoft and we had to determine for developers with the database uh, SQL Server how many days you had. And I think we gave 120 days, which to me seemed like a really long time. Uh, but for developers, they needed time to, to, really, to really play around with it. We wanted to be generous. Uh, here we have actually 30 days and it works for almost everybody, but uh, sometimes people do need more. So sometimes people need 60 days. I'd say it's not because they're working with the software the entire time. Usually it's because uh, the project gets a little bit delayed in terms of evaluation. Yeah. Um, so I, I think 30 to 60 days is fine. Um, anything more, you're just being more generous with the customers and the sales team might uh, might not love it, but uh, um, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a decision to make for the company and, and what's really what's best, I think, for the customers and how much time they need, how much most of those customers uh, need. Very cool. Kurt, thanks a lot for taking the time today for the interview. We are basically arrived at the end. I think we learned a lot from you on how you, um, you know, steering the business, how you're thinking about growth, how you win clients from your website. So thanks a lot for being part of the show today. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it and uh, have, a great, uh, have a great day.